lady. What's up, brother? Oh, we in trouble today. How are you, man? Put the hammers together. We'll see, man. Hey. Hey. Thank you. I love a turkey right there. Around oh, the all right. All right. Good. That's all I need to hear. What? Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks. Good morning, folks. Out here at Kentucky Lake fishing tournament number two in the LBL division. This is a BFL. We've got, I think about 130 something boats. We're boat number 80, fishing what Wesley done over here. The motor's running. We had a little kill switch issue, but we got it taken care of. Shout out to Dan Moorhead for uh, saving us because we were been dead in the water. We've just been trolling back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So everything's good. We got all the, the bad juju out of the boat. We're gonna go out there and try to catch a few fish. So we're waiting on the national anthem and the morning prayer and hope we get out there and back safe that's the plan get there and back safe and catch a few fish and have have a good time boat number 75 boat 76 boat 77 boat 78 good luck man boat 80. Number one. Uh, I think it's another little one. Uh, it might be a keeper. Close, huh? Yeah, thanks. Baby keeper. All right, got my points. Exactly. No zero for me today. Yay! He's good. I'm good. He's a small one. Just trying to. Yeah, we are getting bites. Go. fish back here just getting the right size there we go there we go you're on the board that's a, got a little bit of weight to him good job did you catch him on that carp off that carp <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It's good solid fish. 
the car pattern going. Plenty of carp in this lake. There's got to be one over here. This looks good. Yeah. Nice little corner. Morning. How are you today? Pretty good. Good. You got a beautiful day to do it. Yeah, it's nice. I'm catching a few. Yeah. Still kind of hunting and packing. They were on this wacky rig really hard, you know, first thing, but now it's kind of got me wondering if I need to switch colors or if it's just over with. I almost felt like a bluegill though. Just kind of pecking at it, but got him that time. A little guy. It's kind of what I thought it was. Just don't want to lose my worm. I don't have many of these left. Oh, I lost it. Dang it. No kidding. I think I only got four of them. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, no, I got him. Oh, skinny sucker. He was right off the edge of the flowers right there, man. It's crazy. They're just sitting there. I'm bumping down. He's 14, isn't he? Not even close, I don't think. Yeah. Change. Give me a thumbs up if you appreciate the content and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We started the morning off in a marina. We were just fishing four or five little key stretches, just making a little milk run. We'd run through that area, catch a fish or two, leave, go to the next one, and just kept working our way back around. I started out with a, a wacky rig, just throwing um, a June bug, Max Scent General wacky rig, slow fall behind Wes, who was throwing a shaky head. And I got to keep it right off the bat. You know, I think my second fish was a keeper, which really calms you down. Super important out of the back of the boat to, to at least get one keeper. Bring one fish across the scale, you get good points, and that keeps you in contention for the regional, which is the ultimate go to make that regional at the end of the year. So it felt really good to get that fish in the boat, kind of calm me down. And it took Wes a while to get his first keeper. He was just throwing out in front of the boat. And I think what was going on were, was we were in areas where these fish were spawning, just a little bit out off the bank, couldn't see them but they were just kind of pre-spawn, post-spawn, that just kind of spawny. And we're dragging, he was dragging that shaky head through those beds. You know, I was throwing that wacky rig with that slow fall. So we just kept working these areas. It took a while to get that first keeper for Wes, but after that, it got good for him in a hurry. There he is. Yeah. I don't think he's that big, but it might be a keeper. Huh? Damn, I'm catching some, I some grubs. I did, I know. <sighs> We're down to three worms now. You don't have any O-rings, do you? I do not. Dang it. I forgot to bring them. I don't know, fish will whack you. <laughs> I haven't fished with a spinning rod hardly at all lately. I used to all the time. I'm starting to see what I need to. <laughs> yeah. I throw a deco rig, son, but no. He's all spotted up. Yeah, almost. Good one. Take your time. Good job, brother. Good job. That's what we came for right there. Barely hooked. It just fell out, didn't it? Yeah. Holy cow. Good work, man. Good work. Three. Yep, that's a good one. Get you three more of those. There you go. That'll keep. Yeah, you you're getting it done. Talking about bad boaters, we can talk about bad boaters a little more. Oh yeah, I think so. Is he? Yeah. Good. You gotta retie because you'll set the hook on a five pounder and break off if you don't. If you retie, you won't get bit at all. But... Jeez. Right underneath the boat.
That's crazy. What the heck? Jesus. <laughs> that was right under the boat again. Really? Yeah. I'm just sitting there shaking it. They're getting smaller though. That's not good. Yeah, they're out a little bit. Which makes sense because that biggest one you caught was out. Yeah. That's that's got to be fifteen. Almost Good job. One more to go. That fish lives in boat docks, are you? Just like that, man. Okay. Plucking away. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's the right one. There you go. There's your limit, brother. Good. Well, you spit it already. Man, they're barely even grabbing it. That's five. That's five. Good job. Yeah, free evaluate, right? Nine forty. Got a little. Nine twenty. Well, they're barely getting it though, aren't they? That's a good one. Yeah, not as good as I thought. My drag was set loose. Thanks. Yeah. Ever since I put that bait juice or whatever it's called. Yeah, we did. Man, I thought that was a big one. I'm gonna bump him. I know he's under, but... Thanks. Yeah, 14 and a half. As the morning went on, it seemed like they got off that wacky rig. You know, Wesley was up there just consistently pounding them on that shaky head, and I switched. You know, I put on that baby brush hog, green pumpkin, and I started getting some bites. So I felt confident that they were wanting something dragged on the bottom instead of something falling. He was throwing a little bit different profile than I was, so I didn't want to throw the exact same bait. Another thing that he was doing that I think really, really helped was he was throwing that bait fuel. It's a newer scent that's, I guess it's come out in the last year. I just started hearing about it the last month or so. But he was dipping his uh, worm in that scent, and I think that was key. You know, after seeing him catch a lot more fish than me, I asked him, I'm like, man, can I dip my critter in that little that little juice? And I started getting some more bites. So I'm a big believer in scent around the spawn. I think it's just a little bit, it's just a little bit something extra. I mean, why not? You know, at, at least it kind of deadens the scent off of your hands. If you've got any sunscreen, any gasoline, any kind of oil or anything on your hands, you're going to take that, that neutralize that scent. Plus, I really believe that it, um, instead of that fish picking it up, They'll actually suck it in if they're on beds. Just, you know, a lot of a lot of fishings right here, but I do think that makes a difference around the spawn. Wes had five fish. You know, it was slow in the morning. He kept grinding away, and next thing you know, he's got five fish. You know, he's got his limit, and he can relax, and it's just all about kind of upgrading, looking for that kicker fish. Little guy. I know, man. They're biting. Just gotta weed through them, I guess. I'm still weeding. Got one? Oh. There you are. Came off. Wow. I don't know. He's got some weight to him. That's one I need. Heck, we catch my fish. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No? God, he's fat though. We stayed in that marina all morning long and we kept going through the same stretches. There were a couple stretches that we couldn't fish because there were boats on them. But we decided to go down this little row of docks. And, you know, Wes caught a fish flipping the docks with that shaky head. And that's when I caught my second keeper. Fatty. Mm -hmm. 
clutch. <laughs> no, okay, I'm switching to the worm. I've seen enough. I have seen enough. 16? Yeah. Well, it's a cold, I guess. Net? No. Hit it on the fall? Yeah. They think I was like... Rowdy. Good job. Damn, they have a little dock back going on. That's a keeper, I think. I hope so. man nice change of scenery yeah he just started swimming off with it thanks for giving me that pole <laughs> I think you need to retie again <laughs> just messing with you tell you what that fish wasn't coming off all right you go Uh, right at 16. I'll show you real quick my wacky rig setup. This was really working good in the low light conditions. I was just throwing, this is a five inch Berkeley Maxent General. If you have not tried the Maxent stuff, it's legit. It really makes a difference. It's expensive. And that was a problem I was having was I was losing these worms because I did not have a collar and they're basically a dollar something a piece. But I think it's worth it. So June bug and the hook I like, this is a BMC weedless Neko hook. I've been throwing this hook around the last couple years. It is a great hook for a wacky rig. It's got these two kind of mono weed guards on there. They're, they're light, but it is enough to deflect through cover. Um, fishing this thing, if you get it on the bottom, you just kind of shake it up. It seems like it just comes right through the rocks really nicely. Same thing with wood. You can skip it around wood. And a big key with this is don't pull it into the laydowns. If you're coming across a tree branch or something, don't pull it in as it gets, as your worm kind of snugs up against a limb, just shake your rod tip and lift. And it, it just makes that worm come back over there. So it's not a lot, but it's enough to get you through cover. And the hook upright is excellent on it. This is a size one knot. I was throwing it on 12 pound test. And I had 12 pound fluorocarbon tied to 15 pound. This is a nano fill. I believe this is 15 pound, but 15 pound braid. 12 pound test, the water was about three foot visibility. So you can definitely get away with that 12 pound test and just a seven foot medium. This is a Daiwa Tatula and then a size 2500 or 3000 series spinning reel was getting the job done. This is a great setup, you know, all around you can fish shaky head, Ned rig, wacky rig, whatever. But that was really going on. That was really happening in that low light conditions. But as the day got brighter, the sun got up and the day changed, it seemed like they just got off of this and I had to go to shaky head. Yeah. That's a good one. Well, he did. He ate it. Yes, he did. Oh, I thought that was a lot. A lot bigger than that. I thought that was... God, he didn't even keep her. That thing ate it. Mm. I just got all of them on that hook set. Come on, can't get a break. Yeah, yeah. 
typical fish stretcher. Here's how fast things can change. Wesley had five fish. He actually culled. So he had six keepers. He culled out one. I was still stuck on two. <clears throat> I was happy to have two, but I was sure one that third one. We made a move. We'd fished that marina all morning long. We had about an hour and a half left. So we ran back towards the weigh-in site and stopped in this one area. And man, I'm telling you, this is why you got to keep fishing. This is why you got to keep your head in the game, keep your mind in the game, never give up, you know, all the cliches. It's just keep casting, keep focusing, because you never know when things are going to change. Fish pull up, and they pull off. You can go through an area, not get bit, come back 45 minutes later and just smash them. So you always got to stay focused no matter how bad of a day or how tough of a day or, you know, how much of a grind it is. <clears throat> keep that bait wet and don't get spun out. Don't start trying a lot of different stuff. Stay with what's working, what you have confidence in, and things will change. So we got to this spot, <clears throat> and what you're going to see right now all happened in about 20 minutes. Woo! <laughs> man okay now i'm up to six pounds yeah folks beautiful little brownie there he is that's a good one It's a drum, isn't it? I thought that was a drum. I did tell you so white. Yes. Thanks, man. Four. Now we're up to eight pounds. Look at that one, guys. That is a crazy looking smallmouth. Right. Something could happen, man. I'll catch one more. I gotta check. Oh yeah. Beautiful. Awesome. Feeling it, feeling it. I thought it was a drum too, but he was pulling, he wasn't pulling like a drum. Dude, I'm gonna, regardless, I'm buying you a pack of these worms and I'm gonna mail them to you. I'm still fishing that same worm. I'm scared you won't give me another one. <laughs> That's a little one. Smallmouth. Wow, it's crazy. Beautiful fish. There he is. Is that is that over? I think it is. That's fifteen, ain't it? Yeah. It's close. Got my mojo working, brother. <laughs> That's close. Yeah. Come on, baby. Be 15. I don't know if he is or not. I think he is. Come on. All day. Yes. Thanks, brother. Finally got a dang limit. Here we go, folks. That little guy right there is number five, man. He's had five for quite a while, and I've been just sniffing and scratching, catching a lot of shorts, having a great day out here. But we pulled in one little stretch, man. Boom, boom, boom. It's on, so. <sighs> man, that feels good. Feels so good. Put her in the live well. Three smallmouths and two largies. Boom, just like that, I got five fish. 
as a co-angler, it's pretty difficult to get five fish out of the back of the boat, especially Kentucky Lake hasn't been fishing the best lately. So I was completely stoked to have five fish. I knew I was getting a check. You know, you get five fish as a co-angler, you're, you're, you're going to get a check 99% of the time. So I felt really good. I didn't know where I was going to finish, but it didn't matter. The first tournament in the LBL division, I zeroed. So to go from zero to have five fish, it just felt really good. Four out of those five keepers came on one key bait. It was a shaky head. Love fishing a shaky head. It's a great spring. It's great all year long, but it's really good in the spring when the fish are on the beds or around beds. It's something about that shaky head. I was throwing a little bit lighter shaky head. I'll show you what I was throwing. This is a 3 16th ounce. This shaky head is made by Jewel. I started fishing these. This is the, I think it's called the Pro Shaker Head. Great shaky head. I'm a big fan of the non screw lock type of shaky head. And the thing I like about this shaky head, it's got a good hook. It's got that, I think it's like a 60 degree flat line tie ball head. And it's not actually a ball head. It's a little bit, it's kind of a modified ball head. It's got a little bit of flat spots on there, but the keeper is really cool. It's a unique kind of keeper design. You just kind of just like 16th or an eighth inch of that worm going on there and it grabs right here. It holds it in there really good. Great shaky head, um, jig head. This was the deal. So I bummed a worm off of Wesley. He was throwing this, I don't even know what brand it was. It was um, like a kind of a centipede type worm. But that's what he was catching all his fish on. I bummed one off of him because I was getting bites on that baby brush hog, but he was catching bigger fish. I don't know why, it's just the way it is. So I bummed that worm off of him. I was dipping in that, that uh, bait fuel and went down that bank and I caught all those smallmouth. So we had not caught any smallmouth all morning long. And for some reason, all we caught on that one little stretch was smallmouth. Caught four smallmouth on there, three keepers, one short. They all came on a shaky head. I was throwing it on a seven foot, medium heavy Falcon Kara rod, 12 pound fluorocarbon. Um, this is just a Daiwa Tatula, real seven to one. But the whole deal with that shaky head is fishing it really, really slow. Keeping it, soaking it, you know, soaking it and just moving it, keeping it really, really slow. I think that was key on that little stretch. One thing that Wesley was doing different than me earlier was he was throwing it heavier. I was throwing a 3 16 ounce shaky head. He was throwing a heavier shaky head. And his theory was it just produced a lot more noise. It disturbed the bottom, created a lot more dust, and it made the, the fish mad. Coming through a bed, something that's just making all this commotion stuff, he, he thinks it makes the fish mad, and they pick up that bait, they can't stand it. <clears throat> and I've seen that happen before. I've seen it where you throw something light in an area, and they don't want it, but you throw something heavier, even though you're going to get hung up more, something about that heavier weight, it's just stirring more stuff up and it's probably a little bit louder. It's making a louder clicking noise, especially if you have rock involved. I've seen times where that hap that makes a big difference with a shaky hit or a jig. And I've seen it the other way. I've seen it where they almost want it gliding. So um, it seemed like the large mouth back in that first area we were fishing, they were wanting a heavier shaky head. But when we went to the second, second spot later in the day, those smallmouth wanted a lighter shaky head because we went down through that stretch and he didn't get a bite down through there. Or he might've got a bite, but he didn't hook up and I caught four fish behind him. I was throwing the lighter shaky head, he was throwing the heavier. We had basic, we had the same worm on there. So for whatever reason, um, that's just what they wanted. So that's why you gotta experiment a little bit, always out of the back of the boat if you can, throw something a little bit different, maybe even if, even if it is the same worm, throw a little bit um, different weight or maybe put a little bit spike it on the tail or just make it a little bit different and between the two of you maybe you guys can figure something out and help each other out so that's it we're going back to the weigh-in i'm gonna throw these fish on the scale and see what they weigh boat 80 80 80 80 yeah thank you, oh, thank you guys. I am. What's your ten horse Monty. Ten horse, ten horse Monty, just like ten horse power up. motor, or ten horse Monty. I'll have to yeah, up. check it out, man. Give me a sub. I appreciate it. All right. We'll have a video okay. probably next week from this tournament. Okay.
What's up, Robert? Hey! Shaved your beard. <laughs> you look 10 years younger now. Yeah. Coming five. Finally. Wasn't easy. Boat 80, Gabe Montgomery. Yeah. Wesley. Yep, Wesley. Gabe, yep. You're welcome. Robert Wade, the Come on up, guys. All right, man. How's it going, buddy? I'm, good. I'm doing excellent. Thank you. We need a boater today. You did great, man. You put me on the fish. Yeah. Yeah, we were around them all day. Hey, that boy fish, man. Tell me. Yep. I need you to hold your bag up for me just to top We'll do. We'll do. Yeah, leave it in there. Just open the top. There you go. Oh, five and five. Okay. There you go, buddy. Thanks, Thank man. You. Appreciate it. Good Montgomery, five bass. This is the winner from Jackson, Missouri. All right. How are you today? Good. Good. You're in the shade. <laughs> Dave's got five today, fishing as a co -wainter. He'll be right up there, close to those leaders. 11 pounds, 50 ounces, Gabe, second place. All right, I like it. I like it. Hey, Tom, how are you? Dude, all right. Yeah, yeah. got a 11.15. I'm the guy in front of you. I actually caught a little bit today. I'm did you? Congratulations, we both did, man. Over here, right? What'd you, what'd you have? 13. Nice. Man, I hope it holds up for you, dude. It's just, it's just nice to get you. birthday. All right, got it. Steve Floyd, congratulations. Number no motor side, five bass weighing 13 pounds, eight check for $2,270. Gary Hebert, the second. Woohoo! All right. Yeah, Gary. Second place on the no motor side, five bass weighing 12, 13, check for $1,135. Carl Upler. Third place on the motor side, five bass weighing 17, seven, check for $1,539. Brian Hutch. In third place on the no motor side, five bass weigh 1115, check for $757. Gabe Montgomery. Yeah. Good job, Gabe. Yeah. Okay. Right, thanks, sir. Appreciate it. Nice work, man. Side, five bass weigh yeah, let me see that. Let me see the real trophy. Let me see that guy. That smile, dude. That's it right the smile's there, bigger baby. than the trophy. Here, here, right here. Place on the motor side, five bass weighing 1513. Check for $924. Brad Hutchinson. Good job. Good job. Where's Steve Floyd going? Nice thing, Brad. Good job, Brad. Thank you. And fifth place on the motor side, three bass weighing. Bonnie Bowling. One of those fish weighing. Appreciate it. Bonnie Boom, there we go. Got me a little third place trophy and a nice fat check. Just like that. Third place, man. What a turnaround. First tournament of the year, zero. Second tournament, top 10. Super stoked, man. Had a really, really good day. Ended up weighing in 11 pounds, 15 ounces. Shout out to Gary Huber. He ended up winning the tournament on the coast side. Really good dude. He had 13 pounds. Met Gary, I think it was last year, maybe the year before down at Lake of the Ozarks. My travel buddy, Mike Marfeld, drew him. Mike's a boater. Gary's fishing on the coast side. Drew him at Lake of the Ozarks, and I got to meet him that morning. Him and, let's see, Gary and his brother Brian stayed next to us at Table Rock, the first tur tournament of the year in the Ozark division. So, super good dudes. Brian ended up in 12th, so stoked for him, but it was good to see Gary win, man. It was 13 pounds for first place. 12-13 for second place. Um, Carl Olicker, if I say your name wrong, I apologize. And then I had 11-15. So basically, first, second, third were one pound apart on the coast side. Super close. It felt so good to get a top 10. It's been a while. I mean, I've got, this is my first MLF, you know, trophy that I've got. I've got, you know, I, I won a BFL years ago. And then I have another third place and, you know, I've had some top tens and stuff, but everything's FLW over there. And this is the first time I'll major league fishing since they made, made the change. So it felt really good to get back in contention for the regional. Great, great day. Really had a great day. We caught a lot of fish. The fish were biting. We just had to go through the fish and stay focused and just wait for those opportunities because they will arise. This is that time of year where the fish can move up. You can go down a stretch and the fish have moved up. They're setting up to spawn and things can get right in a hurry just like that last little stretch. You know, I caught those three keepers within probably 15 minutes. It was just boom, boom, boom. 
just pulled up at the right time. Those fish were on there and, and things got right. Wesley Dunn, great boater, had a great time, man. He was super cool, great to fish behind. You know, that's, he was around fish and that's all you can ask for as a boater or as a co-angler is to get in a boat with somebody that's around fish and they give you some space, you know, to, to catch those fish. It was a nice, a uh, lot of room, nice, um, steady pace so just a very enjoyable day he ended up finishing in 20th place he had 12 pounds 13 ounces so he got some really good solid points got a check um great day all around steve floyd on the boater side came in with 22 pounds 10 ounce 10 ounces you know, steve floyd's a hammer down there um huge weight i think second place was like 20 pounds but I had a great day. It was cool to talk to a lot of guys that I knew down there. I, I got to talk to Puggy. Puggy was a guy I fished a tournament with last year. We had a fun day. I got to talk, uh, talk to Robert Wade. Robert Wade actually lives right down the road from me. He's the guy I fished the first BFL and they'll be able to vision with. Shout out year. to Lance Freeman for letting me crash at his pad. That was a lifesaver. Really appreciate that. I had a good time, man. It was good hanging out with you and, and a couple of the guys that were staying there. Um, it was a long night, but I felt refreshed from the good conversation in the morning and Thanks for knocking those carp out, man. I know you've been hammering down on those carp, trying to get them out of Kentucky Lake. It's making a big difference. Kentucky Lake is starting to come back. It's not where it was, you know, 10 years ago. I don't know that it ever will be, but it is getting better and the commercial fishing has played a big role. So thanks for letting me crash at your pad, Lance. And thanks for getting those stinky jumping critters out of that lake. I highly recommend fishing the BFLs. It's a great way to meet friends. You know, that's the thing I like probably like the most about the BFLs. It's the competition, but it's also the friendships that you make. You get to spend a day on the water with a boater. A lot of times they're people that you don't know. By the end of the day, you've got a new friend. You know, you got their contacts, you keep in touch with a lot of these boaters over the years. <clears throat> co-anglers, meet a lot of co-anglers and I've become friends with a lot of guys. You got travel partners that you travel with, people that you stay with. It's just a group of, it's a bonding experience. It's kind of like a little brotherhood. So if you been thinking about jumping in some BFLs, I highly recommend it. You know, they're affordable, they're spread out. I think there's 20 something divisions throughout the nation, throughout the country. It's a great time. It's a great way to learn. It's a great way to, you know, feed that competitive itch and start out on a coal England. Start out as a co at the back of the boat, do that for as long as you want. You know, if you get time, things free up and you can do the practice, you can pre-practice, you know, on a lake, jump up there to the motor side and, and, and take a chance. But appreciate you guys coming along on this adventure. Got several more videos coming up. I'm fishing the rest of the Ozark division and I plan on fishing the rest of the LBL division. Hopefully gonna make the regionals in one of those divisions. Thanks for the support. Once again, give me a thumbs up if you appreciate this content and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you next time.